dear students how are you hope you are well by the grace of almighty allah today i am going to take a class on literary terms or figures of speech a student who studies english literature i think should have a sound knowledge about this term i hope all of my students and lovers of english literature will enjoy my class let's start our class so welcome to my class i am mahmud hasan masood lecturer department of english narsindi government college narsindi today i am going to discuss on literary terms or figures of speech or rhetoric you know these are very important uh, for the students actually to get the real interest in literature figures of speech so uh let us first discuss about figures of speech what is figure of speech a figure of speech is a form of expression which differs from the plain way of expressing an idea and for emotional or literary effect says more or less than what is strictly necessary in other words we can say figures of speech are the ornaments of language they are the ornaments of language they are the words and phrases that convey more than their dictionary or literal meanings so we see figures of speeches or words and phrases they actually convey more than the dictionary or literal meanings they actually say something more they actually goes beyond the dictionary or literal meanings and actually makes liter literature very attractive makes literature uh, very uh, actually interesting uh, to the readers to the students the commonly used figures of speech are simile metaphor metonymy synecdoche personification hyperbole etc so today i am going i am going to discuss uh some figures of speech they are simile metaphor hyperbole personification symbol illusion apostrophe oxymoron metonymy synecdoche paradox onomatopoeia hyperbaton or inversion and irony our first topic of discussion first term of discussion is simile that simile is a latin word Uh, actually it uh, it comes from the latin word similis means like so the word simile comes from latin word similis means like definition of simile a simile is an explicit comparison between two different things direct comparison between two different things in other words simile is the formal and explicit statement of likeness or similar relationship observed in different objects and actions the likeness between them clearly expressed with the word of comparison such as like so such as etc the chief features of simile are given below one thing is like into another one thing is like into another there is likeness between two things similarity between two things similar relationship between two things the two things are different in nature but the things are totally different in nature 
The likeness between them is clearly expressed with a word of comparison such as like, so, such, as. And there will be actually uh, uses of, of, of the word of comparison such as like, so, such, as. Example, I wandered lonely as a cloud. Very famous line from the poem I wandered lonely as a cloud or daffodils written by William Wordsworth. Here, in this line, a comparison has been made between the speaker, I, speakers, wandering and a, and a floating cloud to indicate the aimlessness of the speaker and his dreamy mood. Uh, look at the example here. The comparison has been made between I and a cloud. These two are totally different things. Things are in different nature. These two things are different in nature. I and a cloud are totally in different, uh, in different nature. But the comparison has been made between I and cloud. There is certainly a similarity, okay? The similarity is, the similarity is the writer's wandering uh, uh, nature is aimlessness actually uh, has been uh, actually compared with with a cloud which is actually floating so uh, here uh, uh, here the word uh, actually a comparison has been made between writer and a cloud the writer is wandering lonely without any aim and a cloud is also floating in the sky and you see the uh, use of the word of comparison as here, as, as. So you see, I wonder lonely as a cloud is an example of simile because, because there has been made a comparison between two different things, the two different things, one is I and another is a cloud and the word of comparison as and what a comparison as actually is used here 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 the aimlessness the wandering actually a state of the writer i speaker has actually uh, uh, actually uh, has been uh, made in comparison uh, with a cloud so it's an example of simile For examples, we die as you hours do and dry away like to the summer's rain. Actually, this famous uh, stanza has been taken from the poem Two Daffodils by Robert Harry. In these lines, human life has been compared. We, human life or human being, actually has been compared to summer rain drops to suggest that a man's life is as brief as a drop of summer rain that evaporates in no time we know the theme of the poem is a transitory existence of human being on earth here and uh, the life of human being has been compared with summer's rain summer's rain uh, actually uh, has also a very uh, very very temporary existence like human being actually have has so there is a similarity between the existence, temporary existence of a human being and summer's rain. So it's an example of a simile. And uh, uh, look at the example very closely here. Actually, the word of comparison as is used. We die as euros to a dry away like as and dry, sorry, as and like these words of comparisons actually have been used here to actually make the comparison. Another example, oh my loves like a red red rose that's newly sprung in June. Oh my loves like the melody that sweetly played in tune. Robert Burns actually here love, love uh, actually uh, there, there, uh, there is a comparison, comparison has, has been a comparison has been made actually between love uh, at first love and red rose then love and melody uh, 
actually we find a very romantic ex expression uh, in this in this in this uh, uh, stanza. So here, uh, the there uh, the writer has used to the uh, words of comparison. As at first you see in the first line, uh, oh my loves like a red red rose. Love has been compared with red rose, and the word of comparison like has been used. And in the third line, you see, oh my loves, like the melody, love has been compared actually to uh, to melody, compared to melody, uh, and uh, the word of comparison like has been used. So uh, it's uh, actually a fantastic example of uh, a simile. Life is as tedious as a twice told day. Hmm. There actually has uh, life has been compared to a twice told tale which is uh, uh, boring uh, our next uh, literary term is metaphor metaphor comes from two greek words meta and pharaoh meta means bound pharaoh means i carry bound i carry okay so the definition is a metaphor is a figure in which a comparison between two different things is implied but not clearly stated or it is an implicit comparison between two different things. Actually there is a comparison between two different things but the comparison is not clearly stated, is not clearly stated, is not clearly actually uh, uh, pointed out it is implied, indirect comparison is made. It is an implied analogy in which one thing is imaginatively compared to or identified with another dissimilar things. There are some um, chief characteristics of metaphor that are given below. One thing is compared to a different thing. The two things are totally different. The other thing may be clearly present, must or totally absent. The comparison is implied, not clearly pointed out. Let's see the examples. Life is a journey. So life is a journey. There actually there is a comparison between life and journey. But the comparison is not uh, actually clearly stated. The word of comparison actually is not used here. The comparison is implicit, indirect comparison. In this figure, a comparison between two different things is implied, not explicitly stated. Here, the resemblance between life and journey is felt so close in the speaker's mind that one thing is as each were identified with the other. Their likeness is also implied, not clearly stated with a marker of comparison. So life, there is a comparison between life and journey there are some resemblance, of course, between our life and a journey actually taken by a person. Uh, so in our life, we have uh, different types of experiences. We have ups and downs. Um, uh, actually, um, uh, uh, the journey we take, actually, we also, uh, uh, the, the journey is not smooth all the, all, all the time, okay? So there is resemblance, there is similarity between life and journey life is like a journey more examples metaphor life is but an empty dream so like there is a, a resemblance between life and an empty dream the comparison is implied indirectly stated there is of course a resemblance the mind is ocean mind is ocean there is comparison between uh, actually there is a semblance between mind and ocean time is a thief morning is a new sheet of paper for you to write on morning actually uh, and there, there the writer finds uh, actually a resemblance between morning and a sheet of paper but the comparison is made here uh, actually is is made here implicitly not uh, clearly stated uh, actually 
So our next term is hyperbole. So hyperbole uh, is it is a figure of speech in which a deliberate overstatement is made for emphasis. A deliberate overstatement, it is also known as exaggeration. Uh, in other words, an exaggerated statement or an extreme overstatement is called hyperbole. So in hyperbole, we see uh, an exaggerated statement is made. An extreme overstatement is made actually to say something uh, more, actually to say something much, to highlight something uh, actually passionate, passionately, to say something passionately, to give emphasis. The most extreme examples of hyperbole occur. Not surprisingly, there is no actually surprise uh, in love poetry. So hyperbole occur uh, mostly in love poetry, a context moreover in which hyperbole seems psychologically believable. The lovers actually uh, uh, believes uh, 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 actually hyperbole, expression of hyperbole, uh, psychologically believable. Example, 10,000 saw so at a glance, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. Uh, these two lines uh, have been taken from uh, the poem Daffodils or I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud written by William Wordsworth. Here actually we see the hyperbole expression of the writer when he uh, actually saw, uh, uh, saw a lot of daffodils, okay, uncountable number of daffodils. He made this expression 10,000 so I at a glance, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. So it's an example of hyperbole. Uh, another example, from the east to western end, no jewel is like Rosalind. Her worth being mounted on the wind, through all the world bears Rosalind. All the pictures fairest lined are black to Rosalind. So uh, this stanza actually has been <laughs> taken from a famous drama uh, uh, written by William Shakespeare, the drama is As You Like It, okay? So we find a hyperbolic expression of a lover uh, uh, he met actually to eulogize, to praise the beauty of his beloved Rosalind, heroine of the drama. I love you, dear. I love you till China and Africa meet. And the river jumps over the mountain and the salmon sing in the street to this garden as I walked out one evening. So here actually we will see the hyperbolic expression of a lover uh, he made to uh, his beloved. Uh, <laughs> he loves her beloved dearly. He loves her beloved dearly till China and Africa meet. Uh, uh, it seems to be impossible. Uh, and the river jumps over the mountain and the salmon sing in the street. How is it possible? But everything is uh, uh, possible uh, uh, actually uh, in love and in the uh, actually many things occur uh, in the mind of a person actually when he falls in love. So uh, he made exaggerated uh, actually statement here. Another example. Here is the smell of blood still. All the perfumes of Arabia will not sweeten this little hand. This actually uh, 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 utterance is made by Lady Macbeth in uh, Great Tragedy, Macbeth written by William Shakespeare, okay? Oh, there is uh, another example of hyperbole. My vegetable love should grow vaster than empires and more slow, and hundred years should go to praise than eyes and on thy forehead gaze. Two hundred to add each breast, but thirty thousand to the rest, and A is at least to every part, and the last is should show you heart. For lady, you deserve this state, nor would I love at lower rate, and to marvel to his coy mysteries. Mm -hmm. So actually <laughs> we find a uh, very uh, actually exaggerated, very uh, actually hyperbolic uh, expression here. Actually, the lover is 
<laughs> and lover is eulogizing lover is praising the beauty of 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 his of his beloved in in actually in a high manner uh, uh, actually exaggerated manner so these are the examples of uh, hyperbole uh, our next uh, term is personification what is personification personification is a figure of speech in which human characteristics and sensibilities are attributed to animals plants inanimate objects natural forces uh, or abstract ideas or uh, we can say a figure of speech in which lifeless objects or ideas are given life so personification is a figure of speech is a term actually in which a human characteristics and human sensibilities are given to uh, inanimate object life place object natural forces in this figure the personified idea or object is most written with a capital letter written with a capital letter actually the object or the idea actually which is personified written in a capital letter the writer use capital letter um, example the passions to prevent that murmurs soon replies taken from the poem on his blindness by written by john milton here look at the word passions 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 replies so here actually uh, human sensibilities is given to passions so passion has got the power to reply to say something so their human sensibilities are are attributed to uh, to actual uh, to, uh, uh, to to passions to feelings more example because i could not stop for death he kindly stopped for me the care is held but just ourselves and immortality and we can some this uh, actually stanza has been taken from uh, the poem because i could not stop for death written by emily dickinson uh, see death has been personified here uh, death uh, has actually has uh, has has a pronoun here he uh, death has kindly stopped for 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 the writer and uh, death actually has come to uh, uh, to the uh, house of the writer and death wants to take the writer with um, with, with 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 him uh, actually so here the word death is personified death has given a uh, human sensibilities yeah, human characteristics okay life so death is personified and uh, look at the word uh, death actually d uh, actually is capitalized here okay time let me hail and climb uh, taken from farm hill uh, written by dylan thomas here a uh, time actually uh, is personified time allows uh, allows uh, the writer uh, time allows uh, uh, the poet to hail and climb so time is given human uh, sensibilities time is given actually life and uh, time is acting uh, as a human being here so more example busy old fool unruly son why dost thou thus throw windows and throw curtains call on us must to thy motions lover seasons run john Dunn, the sun rising here actually the sun has been uh, personified sun is called uh busy old fool unruly son and uh, so human uh, characteristics uh, are given to sun an example death be not proud though some have called thee mighty and dreadful for thou art not so for those whom thou thinkst thou dost overthrow die not poor death nor yet canst thou kill me here death has been personified person personified actually and death uh, how can death uh, be proud and the writer actually addressing the dread uh, uh, addressing the death as as actually uh, it is a it is like human being okay? uh, it has pride <laughs> like human being uh, 
So uh, the writer asking the death, uh, telling the death, actually urging the death not to be proud. So death uh, has been actually given life here, given human sensibilities here. Great pines grown august, maybe Shelley. Great pines, pines are trees. So trees are growing. So trees are given life, human sensibilities. Death lays his icy hand on all. Death has been given uh, actually human uh, characteristics, uh, la, uh, human sensibilities here. Death has uh, hands, okay? It lays, uh, uh, actually he lays his icy hand on all human being. The moon drags the sea after her. The moon is dragging something. You know, human being drags something. Uh, man drags something. But here, moon is dragging the sea. So the moon is given uh, actually uh, human sensibilities, personification. Illusion. What is illusion? A passing reference to historical or fictional characters, places, events or other literary works that the writer assumes the reader will recognize. Illusion may refer to mythology, religion, literature, history, or art. Illusion to the Bible and to William Shakespeare's works are common because both enjoy a vast readership. So uh, we see, we find, illusion is a passing reference, is an actually indirect reference to historical or fictional characters places, events, or other literary works uh, that the writer assumes the reader will recognize when actually go through the uh, literature, go through the poems, or go through the, uh, through the uh, prose. Uh, generally, illusion actually uh, 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 refers to, refers to uh, mythology, religion, literature, history, or art. So you see, uh, illusion is made the Bible, many, uh, uh, actually, illusion is made to the Bible and uh, to many uh, literary works of William uh, Shakespeare. Uh, illusion are, are common to to the Bible and to William Shakespeare's works uh, because uh, many people actually uh, read the works of William Shakespeare. Uh, why does writer actually use illusion uh, to their uh, poems or actually uh, prose? Uh, because illusions serve to evoke emotions. It evokes emotions. It, crea it creates emotions, okay? It conveys information concisely and establish character, mood, and setting. Illusion helps to create emotions. It conveys information concisely to the point correctly, and it also helps a character, okay? And it, it also established the mood and setting of the uh, actually writing. Examples of illusions. Now we clap our hands and cry Eureka. The word Eureka reminds us of the exclamation of Archimedes when he was able to find a way to test the purity of gold. Okay, If someone actually utters the word Eureka, these words actually basically adds to, adds to, reminds us the exclamation of Archimedes and the joyousness of Archimedes when he actually he was able to find a way to test the purity of gold. Uh, another example, the chair she sat in like a burnished throne glowed on the marvel. Okay, taken from the wasteland written by uh, G.S. Eliot actually. Here an illusion is made to Cleopatra's bars mentioned in Shakespeare's Antony and Cleopatra. No, I am not Prince Hamlet, nor was meant to be. This Eliot, actually this line taken from the love song of J. Alfred Prufog. Here an illusion is made to Prince Hamlet from the tragedy Hamlet written by William Shakespeare. So uh, actually when and the, uh, when the protagonist of the uh, poem actually utters, I am not Prince Hamlet, then actually this uh, word, the Prince Hamlet actually uh, uh, reminds, reminds us, uh, uh, Prince Hamlet, uh, the hero of the tragedy, Hamlet written by William Shakespeare. 
I wonder by my troth what thou and I did till we loved. Why are you not weaned till then? But certain country pleasures childishly, or snorted we in the seven slippers den, uh, taken from the good morrow, written by John Dunn. Uh, actually, uh, look at the fourth line uh, of the stanza. Or snorted we in the seven slippers den. The seven slippers den actually is a biblical allusion that refers to the seven young noble brothers in a Christian family in Ephesus who slept for 200 years in a cave, escaping the death. death apostrophe. Our next uh, literary term is apostrophe. What is apostrophe? It is a figure of speech in which a short, impassioned address is made to a person, dead or absent, or to an inanimate object, or to an abstract idea, thinking as if each is present and capable of understanding. Examples, Milton, thou shouldest be living at this hour. So the poet is making an address to Milton, who is now dead, okay? Uh, he is actually uh, addressing Milton that he actually uh, shouldest be living at this hour in England. O oh, England, with all thy faults, I love thee still. Impassionate address is made here. O oh, England, uh, with all thy faults, I love thee still. O oh, wind, if winter comes, can spring be far behind? And address is made to uh, to wind. Okay. So the O oh dead, where is the sting? O oh grave, where is thy big tree? So address is made to death and grave. Very impassionately. O oh cuckoo, shall I call the bird or but a wandering voice? Symbol. What is symbol? Symbol is anything that signifies or stands for something else. Symbol is anything, a word that signifies or stands for something else, that stands for something else. In literature, a symbol is usually something concrete, an object, a place, a character, an action, it stands for or suggesting something abstract. Thus, a rose stands for beauty. A rose, something very concrete. It stands for beauty, something abstract. A dove stands for peace. A dove is something concrete about it stands for peace, something abstract. A V sign for victory. A V sign for victory. A V sign for victory. So, another example, the Taj Mahal is a symbol of love. Here, actually, you see a rose, a dove, a V sign, the Taj Mahal. These things are concrete, but they stand for something which are abstract, beauty, peace, victory, love. So symbol is something, symbol is a word that stands for something else. More examples of symbol. In Joseph Conrad's story, the lagoon, darkness is a symbol of evil, and light is a symbol of good. In the poem Pike, written by Ted Hughes, Pike is a symbol of violence, cruelty, ferocity. In the poem The Lamb, written by William Blake, Lamb is a symbol of innocence, meekness, etc. In the poem Tiger, written by William Blake, Tiger is a symbol of ferocity, cruelty, etc.
So our next term is oxymoron. Oxymoron is a figure in which two contradictory words or phrases are placed side by side for raising a striking effect. Uh, there are some examples of oxymoron, wise fool, living dead, cruel kindness, eloquent silence, wild civility, a waking dream, novel revenge, carefully careless, an open secret are examples of oxymoron. Uh, look at the word, pair of words very closely. Two words are placed, placed side by side, but these two words are contradictory words. You see, wise fool, living day, cruel kindness, eloquent silence, wild civility, a waking dream, noble dreams, carefully careless and open secret. So why is fool? How a man can be wise and fool at the same time? How a man can be actually alive and dead at the same time? Why is fool living dead, cruel kindness? How a kindness actually be cruel or uh, cruel actually? So these words, two words are placed side by side. Actually, these words are used for raising a striking effect. Uh, writers used to these words in their writing, okay, for, a, for raising a striking effect. Examples, more examples. Example in, in a sentence. They have a plentiful lack of wheat, plentiful lack of wheat, plentiful, at the same time plentiful, and then lack of wheat. Two contradictory words actually are placed side by side, okay? In this figure, two sharply contradictory words are said side by side for the sake of emphasis. And more examples of, uh, Oxymoron are, I fear and hope, I burn and freeze in eyes, fear and hope, burn and freeze, contradictory words. And all its aching joys are now no more words. So aching joys, ache joys, two contradictory words. See, he's a wise fool. So wise fool, fool, wise fool. How is it possible? It is an example of cruel kindness. Cruel kindness. High <laughs> kindness can be cruel. She is regularly regular in attending class. Uh, there are many students who are regularly irregular in our classes. Okay. Their marriage is now an open secret. Open secret. So contradictory word. So our next term is, literary term is metonymy. The word metonymy comes from two Greek words, meta and onurma. Meta means change and onurma means name. What is metonymy? It is a figure in which the name of one thing is substituted for, the, for that of another with which it is loosely associated. In it, the name of one thing is used for another. Thus, crown is often substituted for monarchy, the White House or the President of the United States and the stuff, and Shakespeare for the words of Shakespeare. More examples. This is the opinion of the White House. That means this is the opinion of the President of the United States. Have you read Shakespeare? That means, have you read the works of Shakespeare? Another example, the pen is mightier than the sword. That means the writer is mightier than the soldier. Gray hair should be respected. 
gray hair means old people should be respected so here we can see crown the white house shakespeare uh, gray hair the pen the sword these words actually name of the one thing is substituted for another thing another thing with which they are loosely associated crown white house shakespeare pen sword gray hair actually hair uh, has been used have been used for other words they are substituted for other words another example is he was ruined by the bottle so that means he was ruined by the wine So next term is synecdoche. What is synecdoche? A figure of speech in which a part of something stands for the whole thing. A part of something stands for the whole thing. In the expression, I have got wheels. Here wheels stands for the whole vehicle, usually an automobile. For example, do you have wheels? That means do you have a car? I engaged. 10 hands for the work that means i engaged 10 men for the work england won the match that means england the players of england won the match let not ambition mark their useful trial let not ambition that means let not ambitious men mock their useful trial the mother rose in her to see the helpless child. Actually, the motherly feelings rose in her to see the helpless child. Onomatopoeia. What is onomatopoeia? It is a figure of speech in which the sounds of the words and phrases echo or suggest their sense. Or it is a figure in which the sound reflects the sense. In other words, yeah, the meaning is suggested by the sound. Actually, when you hear the sound, uh, you will easily understand uh, from where the sound is coming. For example, the pronunciation of the words like hum, buzz, Clang, boom, his crack, and Twitter suggest their meaning. You can easily understand actually um, uh, what does the word actually, what do the words here suggest. Another example it cracked and growled and howled like noises in a swan. So words like cracked, cracking sound, growling, roaring, and howling sound. Okay? This, these words, actually, these sounds, give the sense of a sharp and loud noise. Some more examples of, uh, some more examples of onomatopoeia. And the muttering grew to a grumbling, and grumbling grew to a mighty rumbling. And out of the houses, the rats came tumbling. Browning. Another example. So munchon, crunchon, take your luncheon. Breakfast, supper, dinner, luncheon. Browning. So uh, these are very interesting examples. With heavy thumb, a lifeless lump, they dropped down one by one. Coleridge has used this beautiful two lines in his poem. Irony. Our next literary term is irony. What is irony? It is a figure in which the very opposite of what is stated is intended. And there are some chief characteristics of this figure. Number one, something is said but its contrary is meant in this figure. 
if someone says something actually he means the opposite apparently this implies commendation but really it wants to hurt this hurting is done in an indirect way and can be known from the very sneering mood of the utterance of the words examples a very famous example of irony and brutus is an honorable man shakespeare actually used this line has used this line in his famous tragedy julius caesar in this figure the very opposite of what is stated is intended and it is used to damage the reputation of a person here antony utters the word honorable but the very taunting tone of his utterance indicates that it means just its contrary that is dishonorable we know uh, brutus is a very important character in the drama julius caesar but he actually he was involved in the plot to assassinate julius caesar that's why he cannot be an honorable man he is a dishonorable man more examples of irony it is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife this is the very opening line of the novel pride and prejudice written by jane austen this is also a very famous example of irony another example the operation was successful though the patient died it is an example of irony because the operation was successful though the patient that how can an operation be successful whereas the patient died so it means the opposite actually the operation was unsuccessful hyperbaton or inversion what is hyperbaton the hyperbaton or inversion is a figure in which the normal grammatical order of words in a sentence is inverted normal grammatical word word words in a sentence is inverted we know in a sentence at first comes subject then comes verb then comes object or at first comes uh, subject then auxiliary verb or helping verb then main verb then other words or object but in this figure the normal grammatical order of words actually is is inverted the main function of a hyperbaton is to secure emphasis or rhetorical effect example much have i traveled in the realms of gold normal grammatical order of words is inverted here it would have been i have traveled much in the realms of gold the round many western islands have i been 10000 so i at a glance so it are the uses of adversity whom they brought her warrior dead me he saved and him he killed so in all these lines we find uh, uh, the normal grammatical order of words are inverted so these are the examples of hyperbaton or inversion paradox what is paradox it is statement or assertion which taken superficially seems to be absurd or self contradictory yet turns out to have valid meaning at the beginning uh, actually uh, the sentence will seems to be absurd assertion will uh, seems to be absurd seem to be absurd but if you think uh, closely then you will find a uh, valid meaning you will find uh, actually the sentence assertion contains a uh, truth the chief characteristics or paradox are given below it contains a contradiction there will be a contradiction in the assertion it seems absurd at the first reading 
It conflicts with received opinion. It provokes the reader to consider the statement afresh and makes him realize that it contains a basis of truth or some valid meaning. Examples. The quarrels of lovers are the renewal of love, Terence. So at the first reading, actually here we find uh, some contradiction here, but it provo provokes us to consider the statement anew and actually make us realize that it contains a basis of truth. It contains, contains uh, actually valid meaning. So it are the uses of adversity by Shakespeare. Since then, its centuries and yet feels shorter than the day, I first surmised the horse's head so I toward eternity. Emily Dickinson, uh, actually this stanza has been taken from the poem because I couldn't stop for death written by Emily Dickinson. We find actually paradoxical situation here. Uh, some more examples. Success is counted sweetest by those who never succeed. Emily Dickinson. I never found a companion that was so companionable as solitude. Henry David Thoreau. So here we find the example of paradox. The assertion, the statement is paradoxical at the first reading but having a truth having a valid meaning if we actually go through the line closely silence is sometimes more eloquent than words that i may rise and stand over through me john Dunn. the golden rule is that there are no golden rules jimmy Shaw. so all are examples of Paradox. So, dear students, that concludes our class today. Uh, you know, we are going through a very difficult time. COVID-19 has actually caused a great destruction all over the world. So I would like to say, stay at home and stay safe. Thank you and see you again.